Here we have metabolism, and this from OpenStax shows like, okay, catabolism is breaking something up, down, but an anabolism is bringing, an anabolic reaction is building something up. And don't worry if you miss it, then you can always like, you can always, uh, we'll have more questions as well. And remember, top hat questions count for nothing. So there's more to like apply your knowledge. So the thing is that when you're actually engaging your brain and thinking about something, your previous knowledge actually sticks in your head and and also it sticks in your head better and you remember it more. So this is why it's more for your benefit, but don't worry about being a high stakes things like, oh my God, I don't know the answer. Again, it's up to make you kind of fire up those neurons and really think about a concept. All right, so then let's talk about enzymes. Yeah, so the question is closed because we have to get on with our lecture. Don't worry, there'll be more. So enzymes, so here we have uh, a schematic. And the thing about physiology is that people, physiologists and chemists, and they, they, they love graphs. And here we have is the progress of reactions. So basically, it's like this, you can think of this as time. So you start off in the beginning with a reactant, then you end up with a product. But the thing about this is that in order to actually go from a reactant to a product, you need a little energy. So over here is the energy you would need without an enzyme, and here's the energy you would need with an enzyme. So you notice that, I like to think of it like pushing a car over a hill. So notice that without the enzyme, you need to more energy to push a car up a steeper hill. Whereas with this smaller hill, you need less energy to push a car up a small, uh, smaller hill with less of a slope. So this is a way that we can think of it. So here we have the enzymes, and I like this one from OpenStax. I'll give the point to OpenStax in this per this point. So what we have here is that you need more energy again to push up into a up a up a steeper hill and with a higher summit than you need with a lower smaller hill with a lower slope here. So what we know is enzymes they lower the energy to push the reaction to its products. Now, thing is, that what's the end point I'm trying to get over here? So chemical reactions need energy, and they need energy to it. So there don't, some can happen with like ambient energy, or actually I think that's getting a little too advanced. But thing is that chemical reactions, they need energy. Sometimes it's a little bit, sometimes it's a whole lot. Enzymes change the game by lowering the amount of energy you need. So here's an example I like to use for analogy for a chemical reaction and enzymes. So here's our reactant. It's our starting point. So here's a bottle with a bottle cap. And when you want to drink from the bottle, what do you want? You want to separate the bottle from its bottle cap, right? So you want to get from point A to point B. And so how do you open it? Well, you could open it with your hand, but is that very efficient? How much energy would that use? You probably need a killer grip and a lot of energy and leverage to open that ball with your bare hand. And you probably would end up with something like this. How do most people open the, or actually, next? how's our next question? So our next question. So the thing is that you want to go from your bottle to that's closed to a bottle that's open. So if we're using this analogy, if this were a chemical reaction, which word would describe it better? Decomposition or synthesis? And how are enzymes created? Oh, that's a great question. We didn't get to cell biology yet, but most, not all, but most enzymes are proteins. So enzymes are made by your cells, but how they, are they made? We didn't quite get that to that yet, but you can read ahead if you want to. Okay, and don't worry if you don't get in on time. Again, I, we can't spend all our time on top hat questions. We have to get through the lectures as well. So or actually, let's go back to our browser. So what's the answer? So decomposition or synthesis. So why would it be a decomposition? Well, look at it. So the correct answer would be decomposition because you're actually 
breaking apart a larger molecule and breaking bonds between a larger molecule to make it into smaller parts. Even though this part is very close in size to this original reactant, you're still breaking apart one thing into two individual parts. So this is why it's like a, a decomposition reaction. Avogadro's number and moles, I think I'll leave that for your Chem 161 because it's nice to know, but am I going to ask you to calculate a molar solution? That's more of a Chem 161 question. All right, so enzymes. So what are enzymes? Most enzymes are proteins, not all, but at this stage you can think of them like they are special proteins, but what do they do? So here's our reactant, and an enzyme is something that makes it easier to go from the reactants to the products. So remember, like you can open a bottle with your, <laughs> with your bare hand, and if it's not the type that screws off, you can, with like a lot of force and energy, try to get that bottle cap off but if you have something that gives you a mechanical advantage, what is this going to do? Well, do you need to spend as much energy to use a bottle opener? Nope, you just use leverage and it transfers, it, it fits onto this initial reactant and pops it off to form these products. So enzymes, they're basically, the, you still have the same reactant. You start off with uh, initial reactant in this case, and you still um, end up with the same products, but did you spend the amount of same amount of energy as when you're trying to open this, do this reaction without uh, enzyme? So this is my main point for this. So enzymes, they're special proteins most of the time, but they make chemical reactions more efficient. So again, they are still the same reactant, still the same products, but two different ways. Which way requires more energy? Well, the one without the enzyme, without the efficiency, this is going to cut, you still end up with the same overall reaction. But the one without the enzyme, you need to spend more energy, and the one with the enzyme, you need less energy. Or if you're using the hill example, you can think of it as like if you're using um, pushing up the hill with like, a, let's see, what would be, well, I have to think about that analogy, forget about what I said, but use this analogy for now. So again, if you look at, like I said, top hat questions do not count for, during the live session. They do not count for or against you. So again, these are for like, I know it sounds like this like for fun, but that's pretty much what they are is to kind of get your brain thinking. And also it says in the syllabus that top hat questions don't count for anything or top hat co live questions don't count for anything. Because again, not everyone's able to make the live questions, live sessions sometimes. All right, so then enzymes are catalysts. So catalysts are not, so this is one of those things like all A's are B's, but not all B's are A's. So enzymes are a type of catalyst and you can have catalysts that aren't enzymes, but basically catalysts are things that kind of help chemical reactions occur. So again, most enzymes are proteins. There are exceptions like your ribosomes. And enzyme names typically end with ASE. So not always, there are exceptions, but a lot of enzymes, they end with those three magical letters. And again, here's what we're showing. Now, do enzymes always break things apart? No, actually, if you did, things only broke apart, you, wouldn't, you would have a hard time doing a lot of the anabolic reactions and synth synthesizing things in your body. So enzymes can also stitch things together. They not only can help with decomposition reactions, in this case, we have a synthesis reaction. You have two su substrates or there are two reactants, and then you have a final product. So we're actually doing an anabolic or a synthesis reaction in this example of an enzyme. So you can have enzymes that help with anabolic reactions, and you can also have enzymes that help with catabolic reactions. Now, Here's another example I like to use. So here we have paper and staples. So here's are your reactants. And then what you want to do is, what do you want to do with all this paper and staples? You want to make a product, right? You want to staple all these papers together. Now, what's the enzyme in this case is that you might use a stapler. So if this was a chemical reaction, which word would describe it better? Decomposition or synthesis? All right, so most of you said synthesis and most of you are correct. 
Why? Because you're making a bond, new bond between your reactants. So you're bonding these reactants and putting them together. This is why it's a synthesis reaction because you're building a new bigger structure than from the smaller individual parts. So that's why this is kind of like a synthesis reaction. Okay, so then we have here, but how can you go from this reacts? So in this previous example, the paper and the staples were your reactants and you formed a new product by forming new bonds to make a larger product. But you can also undo this reaction. So you can actually go from this where now the reactant is are your staple papers and then pull, pull them apart to form the to have individual papers and the staples. And what enzyme could you use for that? Well, that could be this staple remover. So what we have here is a different type of reaction. But this is why my main point here is like you can have enzymes that work with the same general products and reactants, but you can also have enzymes that undo the activity of other enzymes. So in our previous example, the stapler was the enzyme, but in this other example where it's actually now catabolic, because again, you're breaking apart this initial reactant to form smaller products, you have a different enzyme that does the opposite. So you can have often pairs of enzymes one does the synthesis reaction and one does the decomposition reaction. Okay, so top hat question. Which one of these is most likely to be an enzyme? Okay, so which one of these, all of these are molecules, but which one is most likely to be an enzyme? Hey, looks like most of you got it. So catalase, and catalase is a classic enzyme. In fact, it's one of the things that a lot of microorganisms used to break apart hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. So this is an enzyme, yeah, but not all enzymes have ASE, but this is a dead giveaway that a molecule is an enzyme. All right, so... so. All right, so again, big giveaway, ASE typically give, gives away that molecule is an enzyme. And remember, like in my paper and staple analogy, you can have enzymes that help with catabolic reactions that, and decomposition reactions, but you can also have enzymes that help with synthesis and anabolic reactions as well.